It's time for Ask the Tech Guy this week. Smartphone privacy. This is Twit. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass, the number one most preferred password manager. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ask the Tech Guy. A question from John. He says, "My this is actually an interesting setup. My old smartphone didn't have enough memory, so, so I could still use multiple apps. I started using my friend's old phone as a Wi-Fi only computer for apps. So does having multiple phones, as I do, provide safety for multiple apps having access to my phone number? At the very least... I shouldn't get any, many, as many robocalls, right? Would I need to eject the SIM card in, ever, in order to prevent a link to a phone number? So cell phone privacy is really complicated. And it's because the apps that you put on your phone basically are snoops. In fact, if you think about it, a cell phone is the perfect espionage device. Why else would, whenever you watch a spy movie, you know, Jason Bourne, the, the young lady running away from the bad guys hops into his car to make their escape. What's the first thing he does? He grabs her cell phone, breaks it in half, and throws it out the window. I'm not sure what the breaking it in half does, but he throws it out the window because this is the ultimate tracking device. It has a camera on it. It has a microphone on it. It has a GPS. You don't even need to put a low jack in somebody's car anymore. <laughs> It just follow them and their cell phone. So the real issue is what are the apps on your phone know about you? So it's an interesting idea to say, well, what if I run apps that I'm concerned about? Let's say Facebook, which is a notorious both snoop and bandwidth waster and battery waster. What if I didn't run it on my smartphone? What if I just put it on a Wi-Fi phone and used it? The problem is, of course, as soon as you sign into Facebook, you're letting Facebook know this is your device and whatever that device can tell Facebook about you, it pretty much does. I always think it's a very good idea when you first install an application. I know it's a lot of work because we install a lot of applications. To look at the permissions it requires, either on iPhone or on Android. In both cases, there's a list of permissions in the settings. You can see what the phone is doing. Apple kind of puts it not in a per-app setting, but in a kind of per uh, capability settings. So you can look for location settings in one spot and, and, and things like that. It, with the Google, it's per app. So you go to the app settings and you can go app by app and see what settings, what permissions you've given it. It's also a good idea to pay attention as you're installing the app and don't give it permission to things like location if you're worried about it. Both Apple and now Google with Android 10 have started doing something that I really like. This is an iOS 13, the new version of uh, Apple's uh, operating system and Android 10 the new version of Google's operating system, it'll pop up a notification that says, you know, this app just got your location. It's been doing this in the background for a while. What would you like to do about that? And you're given a choice. Uh, there are three choices. Don't tell it anything. Uh, tell it only when it's open, where I am, and always allow it to get the location information. Unless there's a compelling reason to do otherwise, I would absolutely choose the second option, which is only give the app location permission when I've got it open. A map app doesn't need to know where you are until you're looking at the map. A podcast application, it might not ever need to know where you are, so you could reasonably deny it permission. Applications will, in general, ask you for every bit of information they can possibly ask for. Google and Apple try to limit this, but it still happens. So it's a good idea to use your noggin and, and, and give applications the minimum permissions to get the job done. Putting it on a separate device, well, yeah, that device doesn't have a phone number, but in most cases, applications aren't really using your phone number. They don't really need your phone number. And I would be very surprised if those robocalls you're getting are getting your phone number from applications. In fact, most of the time, robocalls come into random sequential numbers. They're not they're not calling you specifically. They're dialing your area code, your exchange, 0000, 0000001, 0002. They don't, they don't need to know it's you. So you're, you're not giving them that information. There are some apps that identify you by phone number. WhatsApp is a very good example. A lot of messaging apps do that, uh, partly so they can be used as text messengers. 
There's really no way around that. Um, but I think if you're using a, rep, a responsible app, it's it's probably okay. You probably you have to give them your phone number. There is one exception here, and again, it's Facebook. Just a few weeks ago, we found out that Facebook had released a database of hundreds of millions of phone numbers. Uh, the, the, the database was just out in the public with no password or anything. So they haven't been doing a very good job of protecting those numbers. Their, their justification was, oh, well, those numbers uh, are only from an earlier time last year when, when, when we did that, but not anymore. Okay, fine. Karsten reminds me that the at and is notorious for doing this as well. In fact, they even publish a book with everybody's phone number in it and put it on everybody's doorstep. It's called The White Pages. So your phone number isn't a secret. Most robocallers don't call your phone number. They call every phone number. So it really doesn't matter if the app knows your phone number. But privacy does matter. And if you're using a Wi-Fi-only device, uh, maybe... It's a little bit more private, but essentially everything you've put on that device is available uh, to the app if you give it permission, including your GPS location. So uh, I think the best thing to do, you can use one device. I don't think you need to use two devices, but if you're using a device is to go through those apps and really limit the number of permissions uh, you give any app because the less it knows, uh, the better. But remember, anytime you're using a phone, you're pretty much carrying a spy device in your pocket. Great question, John, though. I thank you for that, and I thank you all for watching. If you have a question for Ask the Tech Guy, easy enough, just email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Uh, our show today brought to you by our great friends at LastPass. Just remember your master password and let LastPass remember the rest. LastPass has just expanded their business line of LastPass Enterprise. Now includes single sign-on technology with 1,200 plus pre-integrated apps. There's LastPass MFA that goes beyond standard two-factor authentication using biometrics and things like geolocation. If you combine the two, you've got LastPass identity, and that's what we use here at Twit. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.